Baratunde Thurston here with a video op-ed on a pretty big day in Corona times. Uh, day 50-ish without a haircut. I'm just wearing hats now until I sort that out. Thanks for your understanding. I miss you, barbers. It's the 28th of April, 2020, and the number is 58,000. That is the number of U.S. residents dead due to COVID-19 that we know of. And that number matters because it's also the number of U.S. service members who died in the Vietnam War. Now, I'm bringing these two things together because they share more than a number. They share lies. They share scandal. They share a moral lesson to be learned. It took over a decade for the bulk of the deaths in Vietnam, those 58,000, to occur. We've achieved the same thing in four months. We're getting better at losing Americans over bullshit. That's not an achievement to be proud of. We're number one at the wrong things at the wrong time. And before I continue even further, because I, I got a whole thing in my head and I need to get it out. But before I do that, I need to do something our president seems incapable of, which is expressing condolences. So if you're watching this and you've lost someone or you know someone who's lost someone, and that's almost all of us in certain parts of this country right now, I am sorry. I know what it's like to lose people. I've lost my mother, I've lost friends to accidents and suicide. Regardless of the method, death sucks. And we miss those who have left us, especially prematurely, especially when it was avoidable. And that's what so many of us are dealing with right now. So again, I'm sorry. And know that so many of us are feeling that loss or sympathetic to those who do. And let's remember the reason that we're being asked to do these very hard things right now, like social distance, physical distance, stay at home, safer at home, blah, 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 flattening the curve to save lives, to prevent the pain that comes with death. So I'll say it again. I am sorry if you have lost someone. Now back to my rage-fueled comparison with Vietnam War and coronavirus 2020. What they share is lies. Lies that led to many people unnecessarily dying. The Vietnam War kicked off. Our formal involvement kicked off based on a big old gigantic lie. And if, I don't know if you've had a chance, uh, like me, to watch the Ken Burns 18-hour documentary series on uh, Netflix, but no time like the present to brush up on the corrupt history of your government. August 4th, 1964, in the Gulf of Tonkin, allegedly North Vietnamese struck at innocent U.S. naval vessels just parked in international waters for typical exercises. And that unprovoked attack lit a fire in Washington. And President Lyndon Johnson demanded a resolution from the U.S. Congress, and he got it, authorizing military action with no oversight whatsoever. And it turns out that August 4th, 1964 attack never happened. And so the whole thing is built on a lie. And there were lies subsequent to those lies in terms of the massacres we were involved in, in terms of the effectiveness of our combat operations. Lies built on lies built on lies. Now, let's come to coronavirus, which we now know back in January and February, the intelligence community regularly updating the White House on the growing, looming, severe threat about to be on our doorstep yet what we hear publicly lies it's a hoax it's just like the flu and that's not just coming from the president that's coming from the hhs secretary alex azar too and we now know the opposite to have been true lies leading to death now it's a kind of a different nature with vietnam because in that sense we overplayed the threat Johnson had an interest politically in trying to win the upcoming election, so he needed a boogeyman, and the North Vietnamese played that role for him. In this case, our president 
has a political interest in playing down the threat because the economy is the thing wherein he's going to keep his title of king. And so we hear the opposite message. This is not very serious when in fact it is. But the outcome in both cases is death from which you cannot return. Alex Azar goes to Capitol Hill, says it's just like the flu. And the people who try to tell the truth are silenced, too. People like Massanier from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention tries to get the word out and is muzzled in thanks for her service. That war featured a phenomenon of combat activity where we would take a hill. We get a lot of lives lost, but we would feel good about taking that hill. And as soon as we did it, we would abandon the hill. And we'd come back six months to 12 months later and do it all over again. Losing more lives in the process, declaring victory over the same patch of land again. Here's the parallel to now. We've been asked to flatten the curve, a sort of numerical hill, a a graphic, a metaphorical hill. And we're doing our part. We're trying very hard. And some people are willing to jump the gun and said, cool, we flattened it, we conquered the hill, we took it down, let's go back, let's open the mall, let's open all kinds of things, the things where, the bowling balls, you stick your hand in there, multiple people, let's do that again right now, let's let's start a cough festival while we're at it, and we'll be back in the same place, having to flatten that curve again and again and again, if we don't play this smart and we don't play this right. The lessons to be learned from Vietnam aren't just the tragedy of unnecessary lives lost built on lies told. It's also about how we bring an end to such scandal and madness. In Vietnam, there were at least three things that got us out of that war. Truth telling and whistleblowing from within. Thank you, Daniel Ellsberg and your Pentagon Papers. Thank you, people like John Kerry and your congressional testimony. There was dogged reporting from the news media, from the press, telling us the truth that the administration did not want us to know. And there were the American people down on the corner, out in the streets, demanding justice, demanding peace. So let's come up to 2020, and what does that look like? Well, we're starting to see people on the inside revealing what was known by whom and when. And thank you if you're on the inside now trying to make the best of a terribly insane situation. I respect you. I salute you. I wouldn't want to be you, but I'm glad you're there. Whoever you are, unnamed bureaucrat that gets talked down to and condescended and patronized by your own executive leader and too many members of the public on a regular basis. You're doing work. We appreciate and we probably will never know the madness that you stop from happening because what we see seems like too much already. To the press, New York Times, Washington Post, yes, yes, but also the local papers, thank you for telling the stories of the people we've lost of the corrupt contracts, of who knew what when in terms of presidential daily briefs. We need that to continue. And to the rest of us, here's what we can advocate for. There is a way out of this. The Vietnam War was unwinnable, but this thing is. That's the good news. That's the major break with history. We don't have to exactly repeat it because this is a war we can win. Testing, tracing, supported isolation. Testing, tracing. Supported isolation. Say it with me. These are the recommendations out of the same group that did that Harvard white paper I talked about a few weeks ago. They're back with doper recommendations. We need 2 million tests a day by June. We can do it with the right leadership. We're still America somewhere in there. We have these capabilities. Contact your member of Congress and your senator and demand that. 2 million tests a day. 2 million tests a day. We can do that. And the other thing we can do is we can be heard in November because this age of bullshit has got to come to an end. And we need to speak with a loud, unified voice of no to this commander in bleach and all the friggin nonsense. It's exhausting. It's terrifying. It's avoidable. And it's causing death from which there is no return. Let's bring an end to that madness. Let's reclaim our democracy And in the short term, let's get these tests going, people, and let's stop repeating the lies and the painful lessons of a war that never should have happened. We still can do better.
And again, if you've lost someone, my condolences.